We keep hearing about the next recession looming. Our next guest has a book called Zero Hour that helps explain recession cycles and what influences them. Hi, Harry Dent is with us. Hi, Harry. Hi. Tell us about Zero Hour. Is this, this sounds like a Tom Clancy novel where things go badly at the end. <laughs> Well, yeah, there's been a story. I, I predicted the downturn in the 2008, 20-some years before it happened. That was after the peak of baby boom spending, which is something easily projectable in the future because we know exactly when people spend money. And then ever since then, central banks have just been printing money, and now you know, Trump is feverishly cutting taxes. This is an artificial boom at this point, and we're saying they're running out of time, that they were getting to the point where more stimulus doesn't make much difference. You know, I mean, the big tax cut in 2018, here we are after second quarter GDP comes out, it's back to that dismal 2% growth, the same average growth in the 1930s and the Great Depression. So we're saying that this, uh, this is not gonna be an ordinary recession. We're gonna have to reset these bubbles we've created in stocks and real estate, and even now a bit more uh, again in commodities, and that's gonna be painful. And we didn't let banks write down debts or, or deleverage or, or these bubbles deleverage much last time. So we're gonna have to do it more this time. So we call this the crash of a lifetime, but from the other side of the coin, the sale of a lifetime. In other words, when real estate goes down 40 to 50% on average, when stocks go down 70, 80% or more, you're gonna be able as an investor to buy things at the lowest price anybody will ever see again, kind of like buying either in back in 1982 or 1932 at the bottom of the last kind of uh, generational cycle. So oh, this okay, is a time of Wait, time out, time out. I'm afraid people won't do Time it. out, time out. Time out. <laughs> That's, there was too much in there for me to even <laughs> grasp what was going on. So let's back up for a second. Let's unpack it Let's for unpack, a second. Yeah. yeah, some of it. So first of all, when is this dismal situation going to go down? Why is it, and why do you think it would be happening when you say you're, it's going to happen? Okay, first of all, we did have a natural boom from 1983 to 2008 as the largest generation in history was moving up a predictable higher spending cycle. We enter the workforce at 20, spend the most at 46. It's that simple. So that was a natural boom. Well, then it started to go down, as we predicted, 2008 forward. So government stepped in and just printed, I mean, literally, collectively, $16 trillion. And then recently, last year, Donald Trump cuts taxes for businesses when they have the highest profits compared to the economy in history. So we're, we're, we've been going since 2009 on stimulus only, and we're running out of steam, is what I'm saying. So I think maybe early next year at the earliest and late next year at the latest in 2020 we're going to see a peak in this bubble it's the biggest stock bubble in history mm -hmm. and it's going to crash and a crash alone would cause a deep recession and i think it's going to be more than that but uh, if if you believe what they're saying out of washington at least on the republican side uh, this is one of the best economies we've ever had the lowest unemployment <laughs> we've had since uh, you know way back when and and so you say yeah. it's all you're you're saying that it's all artificial it's 100% artificial. Stocks are overvalued 114% uh, compared to what my model was accurate in the past says they should be. And that is entirely attributed to companies taking free money from the central banks, lo very low cost money, buying back their own stocks. Earnings per share, per share at lower shares has gone up 119% faster than actual corporate earnings. So, so the stock market's way overvalued. I'll give you another simple fact. From 1929 to 1940, the worst decade, 11 years in U.S. history, cumulative GDP only grew 19, uh, 20 percent. Mm -hmm. It has grown only 19 percent in the same 11 years since 2007. We are, we didn't have as big a downturn, but we've had a weaker recovery. This is the worst period now in American history, and Republicans are saying, uh, Donald Trump especially, it's the best economy ever. It is not, and it would be the worst economy ever, including the stock market, if it weren't for all of this artificial free money stimulus. Okay, so we have literally 15 seconds. What can we do right now as, a, as an American to protect ourselves from this horrible crash that you say is going to happen in 2020? 
Okay. There's th when you have this great reset, there's three things that do well. The highest quality bonds, 30-year, 10-year treasury bonds, AAA corporates, cash flow positive rental real estate holds up well, and the U.S. dollar holds up well versus other currencies. Everything else, real estate, stocks, junk bonds, lower quality bonds, and commodities go down. You simply have to protect your assets near the top of a bubble so that you can reinvest at bargain prices of a lifetime at the bottom. It is that simple. And you know, you're not going to get the exact top. It's better to get out a little early than late. This is not a bad time to start pruning right now. All right. All right. Harry, the book is called Zero Hour. We appreciate your expertise in this. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. We'll be right back.